Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel. Thanks for logging on. Today, we're discussing the Patek Philippe Millennial Commemorative Reference 5100J in 18 karat yellow gold, this most traditional of golds, on a traditional mid-century form. This is the Neo Manta. You can see and you can purchase this year 2000 commemorative piece, one of 1500 made in yellow gold on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on a card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop and naturally complete pricing details for this Patek Philippe 5100J. Sometimes described as a member of the Gondolo family, the watch is effectively a tribute to the mid-1950s reference 2554, also known as the Manta. And you can see in yellow gold, it does recapitulate the iconic lines of that rarely produced reference. The watch is sizable without being oversized. It's actually not as large as it looks. 34.1 millimeters across the nine o'clock to three o'clock measurement. That does include the crown, which represents represents the outermost point of the opposite flank of the Manta wings. Uh, the watch is thinner than it looks at 11.8 millimeters thick with a generously sloped case pro. It actually easily slides underneath a dress cuff, the profile being as you can see, beautifully rounded and sloped. Now the watch also has dramatic camber from side to side, which appears to extend it more than it really does splay, as the watch has a compact 46 millimeter measurement horizontally across the wrist. So you can wear this watch, in my estimation, on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters in circumference with perfect proportion and security. Now, of course, the watch did come out in the year 2000, and one might be able to say that every one of the 3,000 units produced in the series Series were Y2K compliant. Now 1500 were made in yellow gold. Mechanically they're all identical. In terms of dimension, again, all identical, but all remarkably special. You can see the integration of strap and case in a very distinctly mid-century fashion. The strap and strap perforations in the case are drilled relatively high, so the watch can be said to wear a little bit like a reverso. It has a thin semi-gloss alligator leather strap with a monotone stitch and a folded edge and on the underside a supple calfskin you can see that this is a newer iteration of the strap that would have originally shipped with this watch as it features the Patek Fleet pull tab spring bars for easy removal sans tools. And you'll note that it features its original spade style polished pin buckle for easy adjustment on the fly. All of high polish in yellow gold. The watch features an extraordinary cambered sapphire that traces the arc of the case. And of course the yellow gold ones featured a metallic silver dial with individual sunken registers for constant seconds at six o'clock and the 10 day power reserve or indicateur reserve de marche at 12 o'clock. All of the indices as well as the numerals are diamond polished yellow gold to match the case. And of course, the watch manually wound gives you the additional theater of a slowly advancing power reserve scale at 12 o'clock. And that is one of the watch's core features. It features twin mainspring barrels and a 10 day power reserve the 10 day power reserve coming hand in hand with a COSC chronometer certificate. One of the rare instances of high horology actually putting its money where its mouth is and testing itself against an objective standard of chronometric performance. Now you'll notice that the watch features 29 jewels and no fewer than nine individual chatons bearing the pivot jewels of the train with a Geneva style finger bridge array leading up to the balance which is a free sprung gyromax. You'll also note that the watch features the old style Geneva hallmark as all of these watches preceded the mid-2009 transition to the Patek Philippe interlocking double P crest. And if you look at the watch, there we go, off axis, you can see the rich linear and perfectly aligned Cote de Genève across the bridges. There is a gorgeous enclage or a rounded beveled edge to the periphery of each bridge as well as the balance cock. And in fact, when you turn the watch flat and flush to the camera, it's easier to see that beveled enclage lighting up on each individual finished component. The watch also features screws with black polished heads. Again, you can see it most distinctly when I turn the watch flush to the camera. Black polished heads and chamfered slots as well as chamfered outer circumference. Immaculately finished, this is high horology done in simple fashion. The refinements being aesthetic, those of chronometric performance, and of course the 
luxuriously long duration of the power reserve. This is an excellent watch for those who have a collection of watches and a rotation. So you need only wind the watch on average less than even once per week. It can be one of many without ever losing the correct time. Handsome, refined, rare, a beautiful tribute to a beautiful watch but one that also has personality and a place in history in its own right. This is the Millennial Reference 5100J, a tribute to the old Reference 2554 Manta, both spectacular, each in their own way. Own the modern iteration on our website.